Good day, everybody. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny Saturday morning here in the People's Republic of Canada. It's cold today. Well, it's only about zero degrees, but it feels like colder. Anyway, just wanted to do a quick shout out to my good buddy Irving Twin. We had a nice, uh, almost three hour long uh, live stream last night on my channel. If you missed it, uh, just check the back catalog Ammunition 24 Canada Man Returns where we discussed uh, my recent visit to Virginia uh, where I played at Balahack Airsoft's uh, Revelations 12 event and uh, my character is a, it's a role play type of event my character was Canada Man um, I got a lot of good reactions people were thoroughly impressed it seems uh, everybody wanted to take pictures the guy who runs the place uh, it's called Swamp Sniper. His real name's Chris, but he's got a YouTube channel called Swamp Sniper where he posts videos about these events. Uh, he was he was smiling when he first saw me, and uh, you know we had a really good interaction. Maybe I'll be on one of his videos in the future. Who knows? But um, but yeah, no, I had a great time, and I was very surprised by the number of people in Virginia and in uh, North Carolina. Who were fully aware of what's going on here in Canada and were sympathetic to the plight of people who love freedom uh, in this country and uh, and yeah I um, had this, some really solid conversations with people who were like what's going on there you know like why why is he doing all this and of course I had to uh, I had to red pill them on it like this is all part of like a globalist agenda it's what it comes down to this is about uh, control of the population, demoralizing them, turning them into uh, serfs, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and most people were kind of receptive to the idea. I never got into any arguments saying, nah, that's crazy, that'll never happen. Because everybody's like, kind of sees the writing on the wall that this is, this is what the plan is. And certain leaders in the West are fully on board with it. They just want, uh, they have this, this ideology that they need to save the world. They need to save people from themselves and protect the world from the, you know, the worst behavior of man. And you know, never mind the fact that they're all hypocrites, right? So the, you know, things like the the carbon tax that is, you know, about to put, you know, millions of Canadians into abject poverty. Uh, the different the different taxation and and uh, fees that are being added to people's payroll, uh, CPP is going up, EI contributions are going up, premiums are going up. Like, at the end of the day, like right now, Irving and I were talking yesterday about, you know, he was saying that like 60% of your taxes, 60% of the money you earn ultimately will go to the government. Uh, I don't know if it's at that level yet, but based on the policies that the current Liberal government wants to put in place, the the taxes they want to put in place, uh, that's probably going to be about right. 60% will probably be about right. In which case, at what point are you working for yourself and at what point are you now working for your government? Right? Uh, it, it puts people into the sort of, well, serfs, slaves, essentially, to the government. Um, and, uh, and I think there needs to be a profound change. It can't just be that we vote in the Conservatives and then Pierre Polyev just sort of rolls a few things back, but ultimately the, um, the forward movement on progressive policies and progressive tax systems and, uh, and, and robbing people of more and more of their wealth and their earnings uh, just gets slowed as opposed to reversed. Uh, my concern with Polyev, and he, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm waiting to see. He's saying all the right things, but at the end of the day, he's still a, a politician and a career politician at that. And uh, I don't know, I, I think we need radical change in government. I think we need, I think we need the Canada Man Party platform. Abolish income taxes. There should be no income tax. It was supposed to be a temporary measure in the first place. People should be able to keep 100% of their earnings. People should be able to opt in or opt out of uh, 
of EI and CPP and things like that and old age security. People should be free to choose whether or not they want to get on board with a government run Ponzi scheme or if they'd rather invest in an RRSP. Now most people understand that they're not going to be able to survive on, on a Canada Pension Plan when they, when they retire. So everybody's, just about everybody's invested in RRSPs anyway. And, and when it comes right down to it, your RRSPs are probably going to do the heavy lifting uh, when it comes to providing for you in your retirement. Well, if that's the case, why do we need to contribute to this Ponzi scheme that is CPP? I, I think all taxes should be voluntary. All of them should be opt-in. And I think if there were going to be a mandatory tax on anything, it should simply be uh, you know, a value-add tax or a, a sales tax on the end of uh, produced goods. So that being said, I don't think things like wood, things like, you know, lumber, uh, water, there shouldn't be income or there shouldn't be sales tax on those things. But produced goods, there should be a sales tax on. Imported goods, like completely manufactured goods, okay, put a sales tax on those things because there is some cost to the management of those systems and allow those things to come to market. I get it. But income tax, forget it, forget it. No, everybody gets to keep 100% of their earnings and can decide if they wish to contribute to the federal coffers uh, of their own volition. Uh, under a Canada Man Party platform, the CRA would vastly change. Uh, what would happen is basically we'd still have the CRA, people would still file you know, yearly income reports, but at the end of your form, it wouldn't say here's how much you owe, it would say here's what we've determined would be a reasonable contribution to the federal government. It is up to you how much you wish to, to contribute. And then any, any projects, any new, uh, new policies, new ventures that the government wants to undertake in terms of providing some new service or expanding some infrastructure or that sort of thing, they should all be funded by, uh, by crowdfunding campaigns, like a GoFundMe. The government can just simply set up a crowdfunding website where Canadians can say, yeah, I like the idea of expanding that highway. Or yeah, I like the idea of, uh, of you know, earmarking certain areas as national parks and building them out for people to utilize on a day, day use basis or camp in or whatever. You know, expanding Banff National Park or expanding um, Algonquin Park or whatever. If people are on board with that, they can contribute to that. But the idea that the government can just continuously increase taxes. Oh yeah, absolutely, carbon tax, forget it. That's gone. Because nobody, still nobody can explain to me how it is that giving the government more money somehow fights carbon emissions. It doesn't. It's just a, it's just a money grab, it's just a grift. And the worst thing is when you see uh, you know, politicians get up there in the house talking about they had this terrible uh, storm in Nova Scotia yet uh, they want to stop funding uh, they want to cancel the carbon tax when we need that money to deal with these terrible storms so so contributing money to the government will help you fight the weather seriously absolutely ridiculous and I mean maybe you could argue well it, it will help them mitigate the damage done by the disasters of, of increased uh, increased extreme weather events. Uh, that's what insurance companies are for. If insurance companies find out through their actuarial tables that people living in a certain area are now more prone to extreme weather events, therefore premiums have to go up, then so be it. It's not on the government to, uh, to do that. Anyway. I'm at the park now. Kenzie's losing her mind because she hasn't been in a while. I don't know if the wife took her to the park last week when I was in Virginia. But uh, the way she's squawking and moaning, you'd think she hasn't been to the park in a year. Anyway, folks, uh, that's all I got to say for today. Thanks for listening to my rant. Uh, follow Irving Twin on his channel. Follow uh, me on Twitter. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.